happy, happy Friday. Happy the end of September. The last day of September. We're going into October. Normally I would do a comment video, but really haven't gotten a whole lot of comments to warrant a video, unfortunately. So we're gonna continue with the with the news. And sources I'm listening to. Well, not really listening to, but there's sources out there saying that Ukraine is winning with the help of the military aid that the United States and Europe is giving them. But I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know if that's propaganda. What I do know is that there's elections that happened a few days back. Whether or not the places that Russia took over want to be part of Russia. And that's what this part of this article is going to be about from Reuters or Routers. I think it's Reuters. Defiant Putin proclaims Ukrainian annexation as military setback looms. I mean, I really don't know. I'm not really paying that close attention to it. U.S. condemns annexation imposed new sanctions because the um, ruples has only gained in strength since the previous sanctions. Zelensky announces NATO membership application. I think um, Ukraine should not be part of NATO until they've taken care of their Russia problem. Because this pretty much says we know you're at war with Russia. We're going to make you a NATO member and World War III starts. And then I don't know what this means. Says no peace talk while Putin is in power. Well, you know, he is the president of the um, of Russia. You have to deal with him. Unless you want the people of Russia to vote him out during the next election. Which is possible. I mean, there, there is a possibility. But you're telling Russia that uh, you don't want Putin in power anymore. And there's two ways of doing that. You could kill him. As in, we, the United States, or NATO members assassinate him, or people within Russia assassinate him, or vote him out. Hopefully, it's, it's the latter, not the, uh, not the other ones. Putin slams neo-colonial satanic West. Says U.S. 1945 atomic bomb use set presidents or president it really did Ukraine September 30th Reuters a defiant Putin proclaims Russia annexation of a swath of Ukraine in pomp filled Crimean ceremony promising Moscow will triumph in this special military operation as he faced potential serious new military reversal Unless this was his goal, sometimes in the act of securing a border, you go as far as possible as you can, and you walk it back to where you could safely defend. I don't know if this is the case, but it wouldn't surprise me if this is what's going to end up happening. The Proclamation of Russia rule over 15% of Ukraine, the biggest annexation of Europe since World War II, was roundly rejected by Ukraine and Western countries as illegal. Yeah, United States and the Western countries really don't have a moral background. All we got to do is look no further to south of Russia or south east of Russia into the Middle East while we drone strike Weddings, drone strike schools, drone strike mosques, invade two countries, Afghanistan and Iraq. Now I know that there's um, asterisks next to Afghanistan. We're not necessarily the innocent bystander we like to, to make ourselves out to be. And now this isn't me being pro-Russia. This is me acknowledging that there's issues within the United States, issues with it within NATO, and issues with our 
military might and how we use it improperly, in my opinion. So being against one's government does not necessarily mean I am for Russia or for Putin or even for the their aggression towards Ukraine. United States, Britain, and Canada announced new sanctions since the other ones worked so well. Ukrainian President Voldemort Zelensky said that his country has submitted a fast-track application to join NATO military alliance and that he would not hold peace talks with Russia while Putin was still president. Sorry, boy. I think my uh, taxpayer gives me the opinion to say that you better be negotiating peace. How many more people on both sides have to die because you want all of your country? Unfortunately, there was a war. You lost some. Putin gained some. That's the way that things has been for eons. I don't care if we want to consider ourselves more civilized. Unfortunately, when it comes to war, the victor gets the the, the spoils. Putin proclamation coincides with Russia's forces in one day of four regions being annexed facing encirclement by Ukrainian troops armed to the teeth with the United States weaponry and probably Europe weaponry as well showing how tenacious Russia's grip on some territory is claiming one of the toughest anti-American speeches in more than two decades in power Putin single he was ready to continue what he called a battle for a greater historic Russia slammed the West out as out to destroy Russia and without evidence and there's without evidence on both sides to be honest evidence accusing Washington and its allies of blowing up the North Stream gas pipelines and there's some accusations that Russia did it without evidence. But you but in US, Joe by President Joe Biden said it was a deliberate act of sabotage, and now Russians are pumping out disinformation and lies. So where's the truth? I want to know where the truth is. Both Ukraine and Russia has a are not known for their honesty now. Adding Washington's allies will send a send divers to find out what happened, and we're probably a couple months away from actually knowing what happened. It'll probably be sometime around November, maybe December, before we actually know what happens, unless they're able to fast track the information and with about ninety percent accurate to tell us exactly what happened. It could be that the earthquake that was felt was the cause of the the crack and it just happened to fail at the same time it's probably not the case but we can't rule anything out the four Ukrainian regions I'm going to slaughter these names Donkas Luhansk Kherson and Zaporizhia the Putin said in Russia was absorbing, had made historic choices, Putin said. They have made a choice to be with their people, their motherland, to live with its faith and triumph with, the, with it. Truth is on our side. Russia is with us, Putin told the country political elite who gathered in one of Kremlin's grandest hall to watch him sign the annexation document. So this was a referendum. This was a vote. These people voted to leave Ukraine and join Russia. These are Russian-speaking people. These are Russian-speaking people that the government of Ukraine has been treating poorly. There was war crime, well, crimes against humanity that the Ukrainian government was putting on its own people, causing the rip. That's why it's been in a civil war. Some can make the argument that Putin was inciting it, but it could be just a simple fact that the government of Ukraine wanted to create a rebirth, a unification, to create its own mythos. And in order to do that, they need a national 
language. They needed a national backstory. And there were people not on board. And in, in order to get people on board, you either have to convince them or you get rid of them. And I think the latter is what they were doing. They were getting rid of them. They were um, forcing them into get. Well, I don't know if they were forcing them into ghettos. I don't want to speak out turn. But they made their life difficult. Russia organized a so-called referendums, which were denounced by Kiev and Western governments as illegal and coerced. Of course, Kiev would say they were illegal because they don't want to give up land. But Western governments, you know, you're really good at calling things out and ending up being wrong. The United States has a terrible track record when it comes to Russia. Because they didn't even know when Russia was falling or the USSR fell until the Berlin Wall collapsed. I mean, maybe they had some signals, but didn't know when it was happening. But they were blindsided, just like they were allegedly blindsided in Pearl Harbor. Likely they were blindsided in 9-11. We will defend our land with all of our strength and all of our means, he added, calling the key regime immediately cease hostility and return to the negotiation table. Here's your chance to prove Russia is the bully, Ukraine. Zelensky, here's your chance to make your case to the people of Ukraine, to the people of NATO, that you're willing for peace, that you want peace. Sure, you may not be able to get everything you want, but here's your chance to step up to the plate. But in Ukraine, Zelensky said that he's only ready for peace talks if and when Russia has a new president. Sorry, you don't get to dictate another country's leader. Just like Russia doesn't get to dictate you step down or that Ukraine has a new leader. Unfortunately, that's not as easy as you make it out to say. At least have a ceasefire agreement. You don't have to end hostilities completely, but have a ceasefire until they have a president, new president, and then you could then ask for peace with the new leader. But he's probably not going to do that. He also announced that Ukraine has formally applied for a fast-tracking membership of NATO, something Moscow fiercely opposes and accuses Russia of redrawing borders using murder, blackmail, mistreatment, and lies. I don't think that's a good idea. If you want to start World War III, we should admit Ukraine to NATO. Ukraine will start some crap. Russia will respond. World War III has started. I mean, we really don't need them in NATO to start World War III. We could just attack Russia now. Europe can get together, can form their own alliance, and go on the offensive and attack Russia. Right now, right here, get it over with. And the United States will sit back like we always do and play backup. We'll be plan B when that doesn't work out. And that's the way it should be. He said, however, Kiev remained committed to the idea of coexistence with Russia on equal, honest, dignified, and fair conditions. Well, you know, the fair condition is you lost land. It now belongs to Russia. This isn't me being pro-Russia. That's just how wars work. Clearly with this Russian president, it's impossible. He does not know what dignity and honesty are. Therefore, we are ready for dialogue with Russia, but with another president of Russia, Zelensky said. You don't get to dictate those. I'm sorry. You got to play with the cards you got dealt. And right now, Putin is in charge of Russia. Putin says the United States has set the presidents when it dropped two atomic bombs in Japan in 1945 while stopping short of issuing new nuclear warnings against Ukraine himself. Something he has done more than once in recent weeks is a deterrent. It is a deterrent. I mean, should never probably drop those bombs, but you know, we got to show the world what we got. U.S. Secretary of State of Antony 
Blinken said that the United States has not yet seen Russia take any action that suggests it's contemplating using nuclear weapons despite what he calls Putin's loose talk. President Trump threatened nuclear war with North Korea. It's just talk. It's posturing. It's to send that fear into our into us to say, do we really want this to happen? The annexation ceremony committed in Putin, 69 chants, Russia, 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 as he claps the hands of the Russian-backed officials as he wants to run annex regions. Biden says new U.S. sanctions would hurt those providing political and economic support to the annex drive. We will rally the international community to both denounce these moves and hold Russia accountable. What about holding us accountable? I honestly blame NATO. I blame the United States for this war. I think we had an opportunity to work with Russia on their security concerns, which was widely ignored by Europe and the United States. I think that's why when Trump was in office, he would talk to Putin, come out with some agreement or some deal, or address some of those security concerns. And that's why Putin didn't attack under Trump, because Trump was at least willing to listen. Maybe that's all it was. He was willing to listen and maybe work towards addressing them. But Biden's not going to do that, unfortunately. President Biden wants a war. I think he wants to be a wartime president. Or at least that's what his puppet masters wants to be. NATO chief Jen Stratenberg accuses Putin of provoking the most serious escalation of the war since Russia began its invasion in February 24th. But he said it would not succeed in deterring the alliance from supporting Kiev. Resolution introduced by the United States and Albina and the United Nations Security Council condemning Russia's proclaimed annexation as parts of Ukraine was rejected on Friday after Russia exercised its veto. Can't come out of the UN. I'd like to see if you're really serious about this. If the world was really serious and really wanted to send a message. They would kick Russia out of, out of the UN, the United Nations. I don't know if they're, they're that serious. Blinken earlier on Friday promised that should Russia block the resolution, Washington would ask for 193 members of UN General Assemblies to condemn the declaration annexation of referendums. In eastern Donkson, Donetsk, Donetsk region, Russia garrison of the town of Lehman was in serious troubles with reports from both sides saying Russian forces were nearly surrounded. I don't know if that's true, but according to Reuters, that's what they're reporting. Ukraine said it had supply routes of Russia's stronghold in the crosshair of its artillery in the east and told Moscow they could, could appeal to Kiev if it wanted its forces to be allowed out. Ukraine said it had all the supply routes to Russia's stronghold in its crosshairs up a cherry in the east and told Moscow it would appeal to Kiev if it wanted its forces to be allowed out. I guess the encirclement could leave Ukraine forces on an open path to seize more territory in Lohansk and Donetsk promises captured earlier in some of the war's bitterest fighting we have significant results in the east of our country. Everyone has heard what's happening in Lehman, Zelensky said in Friday night videos address. The war's brutality was further hammered home hours before Putin's speech when missiles struck a convoy of civilian cars preparing to cross the front line from Ukraine held territory in Zaporizhzhia's province. I honestly don't know how to pronounce that word. Rotor saw dozens of bodies amid the blasted cars in the scene of carnage. Ukraine said 30 people have been killed, 
almost 100 wounded. So who dropped the bomb? Ukraine officials called it a deliberate Russian attempt to sever the last links across the front. Moscow blamed the Ukrainians. <laughs> of course they would. They would blame them because they're at war with each other. Each side blames each other. The truth is somewhere in the middle. Unfortunately, when two leaders can't get along and they start a war, it's the people of both sides that suffer. You get the civilians that suffer in the areas where the war is taking place. You got the soldiers of both sides suffering because they got to go fight and kill people. No one really wins in the war. I mean, there's the people that are making the weapons that profit off of it. They win. But the countries themselves never win. Even if Ukraine were to win, they've still lost a good chunk of their population. And if Russia were to win, they have lost a good chunk of their population, their fighting force. So no one really wins other than the corporation and the banks. They're bankrolling this war. But I don't know who's really winning. Part of me really doesn't care because it doesn't really affect me directly. Probably affects me indirectly with higher taxes, more inflation here in the United States. But I would love for them to actually sit down and have a peace agreement. But it seems like Zelensky doesn't want that. Zelensky wants all of his land back and some. He wants the a new president of Russia, which is I don't think is going to happen. I think he's fooling himself if he has the power over the Russian people to elect another president. I seriously doubt that. But I think both, both countries need to get together and at least hash out a ceasefire. And whoever breaks it first, we just go all in against them. That's just my opinion. With that being said, that is my Friday video. Please leave a comment down below on what your thoughts are. And what your opinion about this is, because I'm really interested. And please smash the like and subscribe button on any of all platforms or just the platform that you're currently working on. Not working on, but watching on or working on. But most importantly, have yourself a wonderful weekend.